Okay, and Mary will just do a, just a brief introduction uh, of who who she is. Um, but she is a writing coach here at Empire State College, um, and definitely an expert in this area. So hold on one moment. Good afternoon. Finally, I'm sorry about the delay, but we'll clip right through this. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to to answer questions throughout. But at the end, we'll try to um, help you out if you have any questions. Uh, my name is Mary Sanders Shardle. I'm the learning coach at Empire State College. I'm a writer, and I'll be talking to you about uh, transforming your writing. As I'm sure you know, this writing you've been told is a very writing intensive um, place to be. So welcome. Uh, if you've been out of school for a while, you may need this workshop to brush up on skills. If you want to improve your grades on papers, that's why you're here. This class will help you make your written language clear and effective online and on paper. Good writing is good communication. And it'll help you wherever your life takes you. It's good for school. It's good for business. It's good for life. So it's fortunately clearer than you think. So. Remind me how. <laughs> oh, that's right, up there. Okay, there we are. So it's not that difficult. It's not all Greek. That, by the way, is "I love you" in Greek. Um, writing is beautiful in all its forms and languages. Um, I don't know that I really want to be separated from that cute little beast, but I understand they bite. It's a possum. Revision is something I stress very heavily with my students, and I hope your mentors and tutors do with you too, your, your instructors, because revision is key here. And the other thing I want you to take away today is the word clarity. Clarity meaning clear. Clear writing is absolutely Im imperative in communicating effectively. If you can't write clearly, your reader can't understand what you're trying to say. Unfortunately, we've gotten a little too casual in our uh, good written English. Uh, I understand a lot of teachers in elementary schools are not even teaching cursive writing anymore. So um, this kind of symbolic language in the casual way we write or speak in texting or conversation is not appropriate for college level writing. Uh, shouldn't be used in business either. We worry a lot about what to, how to say what we mean, but it's really not rocket science. It's just knowing how to write clear, simple sentences, sentences that show the shape of your knowledge and ideas, your critical thinking into clear, concise essays and papers. Clarity is everything. If your instructor cannot understand what you mean to say, you're not going to get a good grade. So they're basic building blocks, words, sentences, and paragraphs. And you start by thinking clearly. Clear thoughts is the first one. Clear words is the second. We'll be going through all of these. Short, clear sentences. Remember subject, verb, predicate from seventh or eighth grade. Clearly organized structure is a good thing to know about. We'll be talking again about that later. Concise introduction or clear conclusion. No matter what kind of paper you're writing, short essay, long research, you will succeed if you follow this advice. And in the next few slides, I'm going to be showing you uh, some very common errors that, um, that students make in college level papers, errors I see all the time. A lot of students just don't give themselves time to think through the assignment. They throw themselves into the assignment. They overread the text, overwrite, and waste a huge amount of time. So map out your schedule using the learning contract or assignment and your calendar, PDA or student date book. Start with the learning contract. Your instructor or mentor has expectations, and you're expected to meet them. 
and ask questions when you're unclear. Ask questions. And usually, I don't know what's on the learning contract. If you come to me for help, you have to be clear with me if you ask for my help. Read specifically to the assignment. Limit your scope so that you don't get overwhelmed. Take notes effectively. Keep them organized and in one place with source information. I'm seeing more and more students these days who are just inadvertently copying stuff that they got offline and they're getting accused of plagiarism and they're getting really low grades because of it. That's one thing this college takes extremely seriously. It's the only crime you can commit as a student is plagiarism. So write down everything you know about the subject, but remember to document where you got the facts and information, where you got the quotes. Sketch out your ideas. Pre-write. Um, most of us in, that have been in high school recently um, know about free writing. It's just dumping your brain on the page. Basically, it's a really good way just to get all the information that you know about the subject after you've done some reading and stuff to uh, just get it out on paper somehow. And then you can outline it roughly. You can or outline it by organizing related ideas and focus on a structure. And we'll, again, more on that later. I'm sorry I'm going so quickly, but we really want to get through this. Think of a clear, concise opening statement or thesis. And remember, your thesis is different than your topic. Your topic is the statement of what you want to write about, but your thesis is what you think about what you want to write about, what you, whether you agree with it, whether you disagree with it, whether the research has convinced you one way or another way. There are any number of ways to approach your thesis. And finally, give yourself plenty of time to write and revise. And allow time to rest. A lot of students, again, just get so whacked out about these papers, but you just need to allow yourself 10, 15 minutes, go outside, take a little walk, breathe some fresh air, have a glass of hot cocoa. Um, but you also need to reserve time to complete your assignments and papers, and that includes time to revise. OK, we're going back to the list now. We've had clear thoughts, and you've thought through your paper, and you've gotten some words down on paper. But you're going to use clear, understandable language. Don't try to impress your faculty with words that you think are scholarly. It often doesn't work. Um, don't use five words when one or two will do. Overwriting is, a, is, uh, is just not necessary in college papers. You want to make sure you get the length of the paper, but that'll be easy enough once you've got the research done and you've mapped out what you really want to say. Don't use colloquial speech in writing. You don't write a college paper as you talk to each other or to your family or in, in just normal conversation. Writing for college is a very specific and very uh, uh, defined way. We don't use colloquial speech. Don't use cliches. And the famous uh, William Sapphire quote on that is, avoid cliches like the plague, which is, of course, in and of itself a cliche. If you don't understand what a word means or you're not sure, look it up. Um, there are students out there who will make up words or use words that they're not clear about what they mean and they just end up sounding kind of foolish and you won't pull the wool over your faculty eyes. Don't hurry this process. Uh, again, take time and make sure you back up off from your um, learning contract to on your calendar so that you know how much time you have before a paper is due. This isn't high school anymore. You don't do it the night before. You can't. Use strong verbs and nouns, not fuzzy, iffy, soft ones. Use strong. And I'll, we'll, again, we're going to go through this more. Use fewer adjectives and adverbs. Be precise and clear in your language.
Okay, now we're going to get to some examples. Is this clearly worded? Poe's verbiage in The Raven is a deliberately obfuscated hallucination that reflects the subordinated libido of the narrator's psycho-induced melancholy induced by the abandonment of him by his paramour, Lenore. Okay, here we're having Munch. Munch is the scream. Uh, I'm representing this to mean your instructor reading something like that in a paper and essay. So the answer is no, that was not clearly written. So what if you wrote it differently? Poe uses the image of the raven to show what it must be like to experience severe depression and emotional loss. He shows by images that his narrator is losing his mind. That's perfectly adequate and clear. Short, precise, no extra words, strong nouns and verbs, no extra flowery, unintelligible language. Here's a run-on sentence, and I see them all the time. And they will kill a paper. If the reader is not asleep by the end of the sentence, they're drinking too much coffee. So use simpler words to express your thoughts, not impress your faculty. Review and reread each sentence and take out extra and unnecessary words. Write sharp, write short, write precise, and write simple. Let's translate that run-on sentence in the next slide. Don't try to cram too much information into a sentence. Use short, clear sentences using words that everybody understands. I took that huge paragraph and reduced it to this. At risk of seeming ridiculous, neither do you want to be too simplistic. That's not appropriate for college writing either. So. The sentence at the bottom is awkward. The ghost of Hamlet's murdered father telling him to is the reason that Hamlet seeks revenge on his uncle. Although you can probably understand what the writer means to say, it's not very clearly written. You want to keep important points at the beginning of a sentence and keep related words together. Hamlet seeks revenge when his father's ghost tells him he was murdered. You can see it's shorter, it's more directly worded, and it's clearer. A flower garden, when not tended properly, becomes infested with weeds and pests. When not tended properly, just interrupts the thought that you're trying to communicate. It's an extra clause that really doesn't, it just confuses the sentence. We want to simplify it, so we're going to do it like this. An untended garden can become infested with weeds and pests. Much clearer and much shorter and better. Passive voice is something we, you'll hear a lot about, uh, hopefully, if your faculty are on, on target with writing. Um, passive voice is fuzzy, it's weak, it's unconvincing, uh, and it's always got, usually has the word done by someone. If you're using passive voice, uh, you're saying that something was done by somebody else. So that that means that the thing that is the person is the thing or the person is doing is relegated to an unimportant position in a sentence because you haven't had them doing actively doing what it is they're supposed to do. So you want to change this passive way to an active way. The Christmas shopping was always done by should become my mother and sister always did the Christmas shopping months in advance. The, way the word by is eliminated and the key nouns are placed at the front with a verb in the middle and the rest follows. Subject, verb, predicate. That's the simplest way to create a sentence, a clear sentence that is. 
Okay, another thing we see a lot of is confusing tenses. You start out in one tense, either in the sentence or in a paragraph or in the whole paper, and suddenly you're in present tense uh, and you're in another tense. So here this, this, the writer starts out with past tense depicted and ends this, this, this sentence in present tense using the word is, which is a present tense verb. So if you start out with depicted, which is pre past tense, you should end up with past tense. So we just correct it very simply. The artist depicted how the American 18th century landscape was altered by slash and burn logging. If you want to stay in present tense, you probably could, but pick a, pick a tense and stay with it. Here's another thing we see a lot of, and that's pronouns that don't agree. Wrong is one is never at fault if they admit defeat. Uh, the, the correct way is one is never at fault if she admits defeat. You could equally say he or she admit, admits defi defeat or one admits defeat. Um, also avoid the use of personal pronouns like you in a paper. You understand from reading this text what the author meant to say. Uh, always use one or just personalize it if you can, but try to avoid you or we um, and uh, related personal pronouns. Here's another example of, of pronoun agreement. A man is never sure about security in airports when they travel for business. A man is not a they. A man is a man. It's one person. So a man is never sure about security in airports when he travels for business. Remember I said avoid colloquialisms. We don't talk in college. We don't write college papers like we talk to each other in public. Um, so here's a typically colloquial phrase. He was like, you know, pretty much tanked when he drove off the road and that sucked. But when you're writing it in a paper, you want to make it for college level. He had been drinking when the accident occurred is a simple way. Students. I think sometimes think that if they write in a breezy conversational style that that's acceptable, but it's not, unfortunately. Okay, we're going to talk about art organization, which is um, a visual way of Im imagining a paper that you're going to write. Again, every paper starts with an introduction or thesis statement. Uh, it's a clear, concise statement of your purpose in writing the paper and what you believe or what you want to convey to the reader. You can start with just a one sentence thesis and remember it's different than the topic. A thesis is what your creative and critical thinking has come up with about the topic, not the topic itself. And everything that follows this will support the statement like a pillar and I'll show you how that works. Each paragraph that follows the introduction should relate back to the introduction. Each paragraph supports in your own words or through your cited sources why you believe your introduction or thesis to be true. You must cite, remember, any resource of information from which you have used quotations or lifted facts and statements, even if you've changed them from the original, even if you've retyped them. They're, if they're not your original facts and not your original words and not your original thoughts, you must cite them. And finally, at the bottom of the pillar is, of course, the conclusion without which nothing on top is supported. So each defending paragraph leads to your conclusion. Each paragraph, like a column, uh, rests solidly on your conclusion, which supports everything on top. Your conclusion summarizes your findings and restates your introduction or thesis statement clearly and concisely. It's just a handy way to visualize what a paper would look like if you designed it. So we're going to give an example. Your introduction or thesis or hypothesis is your selected or assigned topic introduced, reworded, and refined to show your opinion, for instance. The topic is hermits walk among us, solitaries in modern day American life. 
And the thesis is, this is what you come up with your research, that hermits are not just an historical human oddity of old world Europe, England, or Africa. Hermits, both religious and secular, li exist in rural and urban areas in our time in our country. So that would be my introductory paragraph, maybe with a little more information. And each following paragraph, and there may be many more than three, will uh, provide the necessary information about hermits that you have found in your research and reading, always cited and always documented, whether quoted or rephrased in your own words. And then your conclusion, your final paragraph, is simply your thesis restated and including a concise summary of your evidence and research supporting what you stated at the beginning. Your conclusion should show, we hope, that you've proved about what you've proved about hermits living in modern day America. So we're at the end here. The, the sequence of events when you're working on a paper is once you've done some of your writing, you're going to draft, free write, brain dump everything onto the page. And that should be your rough draft. Then you're going to rewrite it. And that should be a first draft. This should be more organized. It should follow a somewhat of an outline if you want to follow that little column uh, you know, types of, of of uh, structure. You're f free to do that. There are many different kinds of ways to approach papers. I just simplified it really, really easily. Read it aloud to yourself. You'll be surprised how much you can hear that doesn't sound right and that you know you have to go back and, and correct. Then you're going to go back and correct everything that spell check has told you to do and maybe look at some of the grammatical errors that you've learned. Um, you're going to, you Really clean it up. Make sure you've got a good thesis statement. Make sure everything backs up your th thesis statement and your conclusion. Read it aloud again. And then check your sources and citations. Make sure that everything you've said that isn't your knowledge, your facts, something that you got somewhere, it has to be cited. MLA, whatever, whichever one you're using. Then your third draft is the final draft. Um, get as much information as you can down in one sitting in the first, in this rough draft. But then you're going to refine it and reorganize it until you get to the third draft. So if you're unsure at any point, you can contact a learning coach, which would be me. and. Uh, you can use smart thinking, and I'll be giving you that in advice in a minute, too. So where's the mystery? You're going to do reading research, you're going to organize, you're going to be simple, you're going to be clear, and you're going to revise a lot. And hopefully, you'll translate your unclear writing into a good grade on a paper. And this final quote from Wallace Shawn, who is the, was the editor of The New Yorker. Okay, and here's some resources. My ESC Writing Resource Center out of the Genesee Center is really helpful. They have um, quizzes and everything you can do on punctuation and grammar. They have sample essays to look at. They have sample research papers to look at. It looks like a little room. Maybe you've looked at it before. Uh, of course, there's the ESC Online Library. Uh, Purdue has an online writing lab, which is a very helpful thing to look at. One of the most common books used here is Diana Hacker, and she's accessible online at dianahacker.com. Um, she also has a writer's reference, which I believe is also online. Uh, and it also has quizzes on a lot of the things we've talked about today. You can always take a college writing course. Uh, we also other, uh, offer excuse me, ev other academic source support workshops on site and through Illuminate. My personal favorite is Strunk and White's Elements of Style. E.B. White 
is the guy who wrote uh, Stuart Little and um, Charlotte's Web. He was the writer for The New Yorker for years and years, and it's just probably one of the best essayists ever. Uh, he wrote a personal book of essays called One Man's Meat, which I recommend to my students a lot. But it is 75 pages of everything you ever wanted to know about writing clearly. And then if you have your orange and white student date book, you may not, but if you do, at the back there's a real quick reference guide. OK. Did anyone else get online while we were? OK. And, this, and let me give you my, how do I do? Um, OK, I want to type. No, OK, never mind. OK, that's, <laughs> thank you so much. I'm going to turn this back over to Teresa. And then if you have questions, uh, we can just swap back and forth, OK? OK, never, OK, I'll hold on. Thank you, everybody, for being patient. Um, I wasn't able to get online. Uh, this is Teresa again. So uh, Mary's here for another 30 minutes, uh, a little less than 30 minutes. Um, I would say if you have any questions, uh, this will be the time um, to raise your hand. And we can have Mary um, address those uh, questions, comments, um, whatever they might be. OK, great. So Anne, why don't you type in your question? And then I'll hand it back over to Mary in a minute. I'm still trying to get online, so um, hopefully we won't be doing this. OK, are these slides available online? No, they're not available online, but I will be sending um, these slides along with a recorded link later today, tomorrow. So you will have them to refer back to. OK, great. Any other questions? All right, Mary, go right ahead. Uh, you can print right out of Illuminate. Yes, you can if you want to. Good point. Thank you. You could also, uh, let me see here, can I send this? Well, I could send it, but it, there, there are a lot of slides there. OK, B, go right ahead and type in your question. OK, and if you're ready to type in as yours, you can do the same. OK, great. You're welcome. I, uh, I definitely look for it in the next couple of days. Holly, go right ahead and type your question as well. OK, Holly, what if your professor gives comments only on a paper but doesn't give critique on writing style? So hold on one second and let Mary actually answer that question for you. Um, every tutor, every instructor, every mentor seems to have a different style of, um, of how they address papers. Uh, there are some out there that basically just want you to deal with the issue of the, what you're, the text you're reading. Uh, some of them are going to be really, really hard on writing. If you're um, if you ta I talk about that concept in another line or paragraph. You know, I, I don't, I'm not sure. I'd have to have an example. Oh, if I've cited the information that I'm quoting from a reference, is it plagiarism if I talk about that concept in another line or paragraph? Uh, if you're, a good way to say it is, uh, you know, the, the image that I get from, and then you name the author or the site, uh, the, the, the impression that I get from the author or the site is, um, is the following. And then you've covered yourself because you've given credit to the author or the site uh, because then you're going to explain what you're understanding from that. But you must always say, I'm getting this idea because I read this information. Does that help? And back to Holly, too. If you want critique on writing style and you have a paper that you're curious uh, about, uh, you might talk to Teresa. OK, great, Anne, thanks. Um, you might send it to Teresa. If, it, if you're really struggling with the paper, we can, we can help you out. OK, somebody up there has another quote. Anne? OK. 
Any advice regarding weaving personal experience into essays? Some instructors encourage and others want you to stick to analysis and material. Yeah, and again, I've seen that a lot. Some, some uh, faculty want you. I've done it on papers for my masters. And uh, my instructors have thought it was wonderful that I bring in personal experience. So it depends. Uh, again, you've heard that a lot here at, at Empire State. I'm sorry. But uh, you might want to just ask specifically before you launch into something on a paper whether or not it's going to fly um, successfully with your faculty member. Okay. And we have Mary. Want to type in? Anyone else? We're waiting on Mary. It's a great name, by the way. How many of you are first time first term students? Raise your hand or give a smiley face. Okay. 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 Um, okay. Just curious. Um, all of the papers I've submitted never come back with comments in regard to writing. Is this typical? Again, it depends on the on the faculty member. Uh, it could mean that you're doing just fine, Mary, <laughs> and may, maybe not to poke a, a, a sleeping beast. Okay, but uh, again, if you're concerned, we can help you. Okay. Anne, are you typing in? Okay. Okay, good. Oops. Okay, we're waiting on some. Anne, type in if, if there is something. Oh, that's a really good question. No. Um, I would say if a sentence is going on for two or three lines, you've probably written a sentence that could be broken into two. And if you're using the word and a lot or but a lot, you might want to just rephrase the sentence and make it into two sentences. Just don't want to make it go on for three lines or longer, OK? Does that help? How about the use of semicolons? Yes. Well, if you know how to use them, a lot of students that I'm seeing have forgotten how to use them appropriately. Again, if you want to get on the Writing Resource Center, uh, the writing, Writer's Complex, uh, that has a really good exercise on, on semicolons. Uh, and also commas and re just sort of re-familiarizing yourself. Also at the big in back of that student date book, there's that quick reference. Uh, semicolons are used to separate um, individual clauses. And the clauses usually should have their own subject, verb, and predicate. Uh, one of my favorite books on punctuation is uh, Eats, Shoots, and Leaves by Lynn Truss, T-R-U-S-S. -S. It's hilarious. It's the whole history of punctuation. If you want to por torture yourself with por punctuation, that's probably great. Uh, Anne McCorkle, I have been getting all A's on my papers, but I feel that I'm not being clear and concise as I could be. Do you recommend that I read the elements of style anyway so that I can improve even more? Sweetheart, you are. You are a champion. Uh, Elements of Style is all of 74 pages, 72 pages. It, it, it doesn't take long to read it. There is actually now a um, illustrated version, which I, I've asked for for Christmas. Uh, it came out in the last couple of years. And I recommend that that would be a probably really interesting way to look at how to do great style in your papers. So go for it. <laughs> you're in my you're in my club. I'm a real geek about writing and punctuation. So go ahead. Anyone else? Deborah, you can start typing. I can just click on Mary once and click on Holly. I really want to develop a great style. Thanks. Oh, you're in. <laughs> Thank you, Anne. We're waiting for Deborah. This is a great class. And Tim. And Stephen. OK, we're just. Uh, 
I can't. Oh, I see the highlights. Okay. Okay, Deborah. I was just letting you know this was my first year. Hi. Thank you. I'm glad glad to know. Welcome aboard, and good luck to you. Let us know if you need support along the way. Tim, a little off topic, but on the section of keeping like words together, not breaking the thought, like in the garden example, do the same rules apply to writing in fiction? Fiction, fiction is my key thing. I write poetry in fiction, and fiction is more like walking around in the woods. You just sort of go. You can go off in different directions. Uh, and pick the flowers over there, and then go back on the path for a while, um, and and get back on track with your storyline. The important thing about fiction is staying on track with your plot. Um, uh, words, uh, fiction encourages, I think, a lot more uh, create creativity. But writing for college never does, not or very rarely. It's, we want you to be creative in your thinking, but not necessarily in your writing. We want you to be pretty direct and clear. Okay, does that help, Tim? Stephanie, um, if we want to submit a paper to the writing lab, how much time should we give to make sure we get the paper back in time? That's a really good question, because I often don't know when your due dates are unless you tell me. Um, so, are you thinking? Are you talking about smart thinking as well, Stephanie, or the or the writers' complex? Yeah. Okay. Um, you want to give you want to give it a couple. Um, smart thinking will get back to you in 24 hours. I'm usually pretty busy this time of year, and I only work uh, four hours a week here. Um, so it's really dicey if you think you're going to submit something to me on Thursday, you might not hear from me until Monday. So I'm in on usually on Mondays and Wednesdays. So, but again, you want to contact uh, Teresa. Okay. Thanks, Stephanie. Um, okay. Thank you. Oh, good. I'm glad you. Thanks, Deborah. Um, must go learn so I can continue to learn. Good. Thank you. Perfectionism is a bit of baggage that I carry around. It is not always helpful when writing papers. Any thoughts? Free writing is a great way to just sort of overcome that judgmental part of your brain. I think it's the left side of your brain that controls language and often will be the one that also trips you up. Um, no, the right side of the brain is going to be the critical side. And that side is going to trip you up in terms of um, of, of getting the words down precisely as you, as you mean. There are authors out there that will say you need to have the thought perfectly in your brain before you put it on paper. That can be absolutely paralyzing for students. Uh, I always say free writing is the way to go. It helps shut down that very critical part of your brain uh, and just dump your brain on the page. And then you can be perfectionist about it and go back and organize it. OK, people are leaving. So is there no more questions? Or I'm here, still here. That's Stephanie. Yeah. Did you have any other questions, Stephanie? And that's Holly. OK. Thank you. You're welcome. Nope, great. OK. OK, hold on. Here comes Teresa back again. OK, we can still answer questions, but I, I just, um, you're welcome. Um, Mary is actually a writing uh, coach here that uh, the CDL Center does use her um, occasionally, depending on um, the need. Um, I would continue, if you need any um, assistance with your writing, uh, definitely use Smart Thinking, uh, because they are, they are a great resource um, to review your papers and uh, critique them and, and suggest how to improve them. Um, the other is the Writer's Complex, which is also on our website. If, in fact, you find that you truly are struggling and uh, do, do need further assistance, Please contact me. Okay, don't contact Mary directly. Um, Mary is definitely very busy; has students assigned to her, you know. So we don't want to overwhelm her. Um, and again, I'm just going to type in my email address, um, 
And again, if you want to talk about this further or you're, or you're unclear where to go, um, I would definitely be um, the person you would speak to. Um, the Office of Academic Support, you know, uh, supports all these resources. So you've got the right person on the on the mic. So I notice that there's a couple people typing. If you do have questions for Mary, that's great. Or if you have questions for me, I can also answer those. Okay, so Mary, thank you. I'll be sure to keep my run on sentences in check. Okay, well, good, Mary. We all do that. Easy to do. Thank you, Tim. You're welcome, Allison. We're going to do um, more sessions with Mary um, as the year goes. Uh, well, you know, next year for sure. Um, so you'll probably see different um, different topics that Mary will um, present to us. And I like to see that that she um, also present this again when we have less technical problems. Um, let's see here, Stephanie and Anne. If you want to type in your questions, go right ahead. Okay, Tim, you can also type in your question if you like. Hi, Mike. Well, good. I'm glad, Ann, that you found it helpful. Uh, Angel, go right ahead if you want to type. We'll have to see another with Mary in creative writing as well in the future. Whoa, that's a different OK. OK. We'll work on that, Tim, absolutely. OK, Stephanie and Ann and Angel. Mike B says, thanks, Mary. OK, Angel, I used a SMART program to check a paper last semester, and I didn't know where to find the response. Can you help me with this? If you're talking about SMART thinking, my understanding is SMART thinking actually sends the paper back with the comments. And Mary's shaking her head. So yeah, nodding, sorry. Um, so I, I, I'm not sure uh, where you should check for this. You might want to touch base with SMART thinking and and, and find out where they sent it. You know, I would assume that they would send it back to your email. And Mary says that's correct. That's what she understands. OK, Anne, great. So Angel, I would just uh, just just check with uh, SmartThink to make sure they have your correct email address. OK. All right. So I am assuming that we have no more questions. And so um, we're going to sign out. And again, if you have questions that, that come up after the session has ended or later in the week, please feel free to email me those questions. And um, I certainly will connect you with Mary if I feel that um, the need um, is there. Thank you. <laughs>